Welcome to Real Herbalism Radio from River Road Studios in Eugene, Oregon. Today's show is brought to you by the Herbal Nerd Society. The Herbal Nerd Society is a collection of really awesome, cool people. Really? You always <laughs> say really that. I, think, I always I think say, you say that. Awesome, I'm cool. That's so funny. You say that every time. Because they are. They're really cool people. Yes, I love well, the Herbal Nerd them. Society. I, I appreciate them because they keep us on our toes and they make me a better um, web person. I get that all the time. So mm-hmm. They make me smile. You know, they and they help us. They, they support this, which in turn supports us to do this. So yeah. Yeah. it's a nice, uh, it's, nice it's, give and take. It's a, the, our little exclusive club that we have that is four ninety nine a month, mm-hmm. uh, and you get exclusive articles. People have said several times, "Well, I tried to read your article, but it it said I had to be a member." I'm like that one did, yeah. 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 So you might want to become a member, sweetheart, because you, clearly you know what you're missing here, don't you? Yeah. So, but that helps us pay our bills, and it's a really cheap way to to get an herbal education. I can tell you that. You ain't going to get that somewhere else. Too right. Yeah. Too right. So. All right. And Hunter Creation, graphic design and website designers, putting your marketing ideas to life, whether that's business cards or brochures or a rocking new website, they can help you out. Contact them at huntercreation.com. Get Healthy Now with Candice. Get Healthy Now with Candice is my clinical herbal practice. I work with folks near and far. I can do distance consults using um, Zoom. Zoom. Zoom meetings? Zoom. Zoom, Zoom. Zoom, 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 Zoom meetings. And um, yeah, if you're looking for help and inspiration and would like to get healthy, give me a call. Right on. All right. Occupy Medical. Occupy Medical is an integrated health free clinic right here in Lane County, Oregon. Uh, we are a 501c3, and we are located at 1717 Centennial Suites 4 and 7, and you can donate to us any any time because we are, uh, our, we'll give you a tax receipt, and check us out at occupy-medical.org. Ace High Heat Graphics, custom and printed uh, t-shirts or hats, any kind of apparel, you want to put your logo or message on Something for your group or organization, they can help you out. Contact them at acehighheatgraphics.com. And Sierra Lupe Herbal, herbal Consulting. Consulting is my own little herbal thing. And uh, I also do um, uh, distance and in-town consulting. And my specialty is on chronic illnesses. And I work with uh, medication. And uh, uh, it's just kind of fun to do so that's what i do there you have it so how do you get a hold of me you go sierra lupe herbal consulting at gmail.com all right don't forget that we're on the socials networks we're on facebook we are on instagram yes we at the we hashtag are. the back to herbalist plus we already have a instagram page as well yep. uh, i believe we are on the twitter we are we on are the twitter we are the twitterist yes. Uh, yes, we're on we Twitter are. as well. So if you want to reach out to us, we are there and we will join in in conversations. I know Sue, you're really active on Facebook. Mm-hmm. Um, if you like the podcast and have been a long time listener or first time listener and really like it, nothing helps us out better than a review. Yes. Please send us a review. We, we would really love like to hear more. Yeah. All right. With all that, it's time for the show. It's show 171, which is our Herb Lab show. Today we're talking about. Uh, our discussion with Sarah Hannah Silverstein uh, about Moodtopia in her book and how to handle our moods and how to uh, make things better with herbs and, and and all of that good stuff. And it's been a trying uh, beginning of the year. I mean, it's only a couple, what, two weeks in and, and already I'm looking across the table. It, it, two people, it looks like they've, 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 had, they've had a month already. We look so. like... That's what you're saying. I I wasn't saying that, but you know, it's a really nice way of putting it. But it might be accurate. So, so without any further ado, uh, now here are your hosts, Candice Hunter and Susie Lupe. Candice Hunter and I'm Susie Lupe, and And welcome welcome to to Real Herbalism Herbalism Radio. Radio. So, caca, ladies. Yes, it's been a rough one we've aged. It is, is a funny word, though. I've always felt that way. Kaka. Kaka. It's yeah. always funny. I don't know where yeah. it comes from, but it's funny. I don't know. 
I know. I do know that Sarah Hanna's visit was a timely one. Yeah. At least for me. <laughs> I think for you too, right? Yeah, definitely. I've been noticing a lot of people actually running into problems or challenges that were completely unexpected and a lot of emotional responses mm -hmm. this year. Yeah. And I, I, I know that there's always in the world, there's a, a natural disaster somewhere and a political right. issue somewhere and yeah. whatever. But I, I, I know that for me personally, the political situation has been extremely stressful. So, mm. um, I've seen a lot of people going through a lot of grief and a lot of anger and yeah. a lot of dismay, uncertainty, <laughs> anxiety, uncertainty, fear. That definitely yeah. is part of it. Sleepless nights. Yeah. Uh, Cause when I have a temper tantrum, then people just get annoyed with me. And when uh, people in the political field have a temper tantrum, then people around me get hurt and die. Yeah, people so lose their homes lose their when the homes, their jobs, have those. everything. Yeah, so I'm very, very concerned about that, and I know I'm not the only one because um, I, I talk to a lot of people in vulnerable positions. So mm -hmm. there's about a lot of people who are not in what looks like vulnerable positions in our country, mm -hmm. who are actually in much more vulnerable positions oh, yeah. than we should be in. That's for and, sure. And our the political stuff that's going on is is making it really worse. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. So, and that's another piece of it too, is trying to have a presence that uh, is not the same as, as what is actually happening, like disguising what's going on for you is a lot of stress as well. Yeah, that is a really stressful thing. Having to put on a happy face, mm -hmm. that's really challenging. Yep. And I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I, I'm in that position a lot too, being in a yeah. leadership role and being, you know, in healthcare, like it's people come in to get help from me and they're there for themselves. And it is my job to mm -hmm. be there for them. And yeah. I know that sometimes the stories that I hear, they make me really angry mm -hmm. and they make me really sad, but I, I need to focus on what's helpful for them and put my own stuff aside. So, you know, it's a luxury position. Yeah. So I, I acknowledge that and at the same time also acknowledge that that's also got its own stress load to it. Oh, yeah. And a lot yeah. of people that are healers um, end up with that stress load as well. Yeah. It's it's an honor to be in that position, but it's also really challenging, really challenging. So yeah. uh, both Candice and I and Patrick, we've all been under our own stresses for different reasons. Yeah. And um, that's why this particular podcast that we had last week with Sarah Hanna was so helpful. And we have our own little things that we're adding to it this time. Mm -hmm. um, for myself, I because I work in a clinic, I'm always wondering about people's, when they come in, they're very stressed out, what their blood pressure looks like, what their blood glucose looks like, because mm -hmm. that can be affected. Um, if they've recently had antibiotics, you know, if that's oh, screwing yeah. with their um, gut bacteria, because if, if that's off or there's recent news that said if you're taking antidepressants, that can mess with your gut biome, too. Oh, yeah. So those kind of things, they affect the way that we digest our food and can take stuff like, you know, trace the trace minerals like magnesium, things that help you with mood stability. Yeah, they also can contribute to a mood, mood changes and mood swings. Right. Right. Just, just all of their own. Yeah. Yeah. So if we if we've got those, you know, and you're feeling stress for myself, um, I I know on my list is making sure I've got a good probiotic uh, fermented foods yep. in my diet. Uh, I take supplements of D3 and uh, B12. Yeah, uh, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. There's some recent research I was looking at on the B complex, most B complexes, which include B12 mm -hmm. and B6 and B6. And I think there's another one of the Bs in there usually. Folic acid. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. That, that, that it has, they've got new data that's pointing to that having a really positive effect when people are dealing with chronic depression. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And, um, I, those are the kind of, uh, water soluble vitamins that you can just like, okay, well, if I have pee yeah. out the rest of it, that's fine. Cause it's not going to yeah. stack up like vitamin A is fat soluble. So you can, yeah. you can certainly work hard to get too much of any, any vitamins mm -hmm. or minerals. Uh, but 
those in general, it's not going to hang out in your system. And I've also been like, normally I just say, I need to eat a good diet and then it'll be taken care of. But right. the stress on me right now is so much that a good diet isn't good enough. It's not enough. And we have, you know, you can have a really good diet. Yep. Um, you probably need to eat twice as many vegetables as you think you should, even if you think you're eating a great diet, mm -hmm. because a lot of our vegetables don't have as much nutrition as they once did. Right. Yeah. You know, with, with the depletion of our soils, pretty much like universally, like across the entire globe, we're seeing that happening in a lot of farming. It, it means that our vegetables just don't have nutrients in them in the way they once did. Mm -hmm. They're not as dense. So that means you got to eat twice as many of them. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to do that when you're coping with a lot of stress. It's hard to make sure your diet's right. And even if you do make sure it's right, your body's not going to absorb nearly as well. So, yeah. Definitely. So the um, other thing that uh, I, I've been trying to do, which has not been my favorite, is taking uh, reducing coffee. Mm, that's a challenging one, isn't it? Boy, that is not my favorite. No. Boy, oh boy, is that not my favorite. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is it because of the stimulant properties? I mean, why Why would you have to? Um. Yeah, it, it kind of rubs me up, Yeah. which is great. That's what it's supposed to do. You know, during the allergy season, I really appreciate it because that helps me with the, mm -hmm. the sinus problems. But um, it also, uh, I, I when I get stressed, it goes right to my gut first. So having no. something that bitter that upsets really, my stomach. So instead, yeah. I'm putting in like uh, creamer and sh and sugar. <laughs> Put oh. in a gallon of milk product, <laughs> right? Yeah. Which I, you know, to I'm, buffer I'm, all of that. That's yeah. not something I should be. That doesn't help me. No. So it's just like a a candy bar yep. in a cup, yep. and yeah. that is the last thing my body needs. Yeah. Yeah. You don't really need that. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's you gonna need, make me worse. You need the <laughs> sweet taste, but that doesn't mean sugar. It right. means nourishing foods. Yeah, you know those soul nourishing foods. Yeah. So I'm still yeah. taking a. I have a cup of coffee a day, one cup. Nice. And I just I just have it black. Nice. Um, sometimes I will put, uh, like I'll throw a, a hot pepper in there. Fun. Just yeah. For snorts and giggles. Yeah. <laughs> one of the things I can recommend if you have to go off of something like coffee that you love. Mm -hmm. um, for me, a few years back, I realized I couldn't drink. There's a lot of things that aren't really aren't great for me to drink. Mm -hmm. So I kind of ended up with, oh, look, I have water or I have tea. Those are my two choices. Mm -hmm. And the yeah. tea may be tea tea or it might be herbal infusion, but this is all I've got. And for myself, I started getting, I was like, well, then if I'm not going to drink soda and I'm not going to drink coffee and I'm not going to drink juices and there's all this stuff I don't get, my tea had better be really good. Mm -hmm. So going down to one of the local roasters and getting just like a little half pound of the really fancy good stuff. Right. You know, and I mean, we have so many good roasters right in our town. You could easily pick up just a small amount, small quantities and just have them grind it. Mm -hmm. to the way you want and then you've got something that becomes this incredibly luxurious when you do have your coffee right for that yeah. one cup and start to really focus on enjoying that one savoring that one you know yeah that there's really me. something to that uh, there's a little a little fellow that i was with today and he's 16 months old yeah. and he's just he's super sweet he's super sweet so i i took out this little packet of oolong tea that i, I showed you oh, guys yeah, that stuff smelled heavenly just, it, oh i think you described yeah. it as it smells like graham crackers to me <laughs> yeah. yeah i mean it's got tea, it's vanilla like yeah. and it's got honey scent to it oh and man it's, it's just know. delightful so and you said yeah. it's not flavored so that's even more it's just than, black oolong yeah so yeah really I'm excited to give it a try, actually. Yeah. yeah. So I, I showed it to the little fella, uh -huh. and he smelled it. And like, this this is for smelling. And uh -huh. we're used to that, you know, with the flowers. And I take him to the garden all the time. So he's nice. used to that notion. Yeah. So he smells it, and he just, like, sticks his face into <laughs> He's just relishing the yes. smell of that. And he started to, like, open his mouth. I'm like, no, we're not putting that in our mouth, sugar pie. Yeah. You know, just yeah. smell. Ah. And so yeah. he, of course, because he's little. Gives a big snoot full and then, ah, you know, Aww, cute. cute. Yes. But that savoring, yes. you know, that little yeah. kids do. Yeah, that really, 
makes a big difference yeah. when you have to when you have to give up something that you love, like yeah. the coffee. Right. Saying, okay, well, I only get this much. I'm only getting my, you know, four or eight ounce cup or six ounce cup right. or whatever a day. Make it be really good. Yeah. You know, Just take the time. It, mm-hmm. It's kind of like that where you say, is that dessert worth the calories? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You right. You know, you could have the yeah. dessert from the grocery store, or the dessert from a patisserie and which one are you going to go with? Right. Yeah. 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 You know, if I just have the grocery store one that's in front of me, I'm probably not going to do it because mm-hmm. it's not worth the calories. Yep. Yeah. But the patisserie one, <laughs> that's probably worth the calories. Well, it also, <laughs> if you, if you end up with ones like that, you end up, usually you have to pay a little bit more for them and it causes you to slow down and really let your whole body experience it. Right. And when you give that to yourself, it also helps shift your mood. Mm -hmm. So knowing that you've got that, you know, it might only be 10 minutes that you get with that cup of tea or coffee or your, your patisserie, but that's 10 minutes that you're just giving to yourself and nothing else, Mm -hmm. you know, and it, that can help really more present in the moment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And a lot of times when you're trying to deal with depression or grief or, anxiety, fears, worries, trepidations, all of those things, those 10 minutes or five minutes even of giving that fully yourself fully over to the experience helps shift your mind too in a Mm -hmm. way that will ripple through the rest of the day Mm -hmm. in probably intangible ways that you may not notice at first. But when you look back over the last week and you're like, wow, actually, you know, yeah, it was a rough week, but there are moments that weren't so bad. Mm-hmm. I got right. through it. It makes it easier to get through it. Yeah. Well, that also comes back into that mindfulness idea. Yeah, you know? it is. It's and very instead much. Instead of taking that really good cup of coffee, that really good tea, or, and, and watching a show. Right, yeah. yeah. Or doing something yeah, yeah. where you're not really there with it, then yeah. it just becomes a thing and not a not your enjoyment. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. the toast that I ate in the car this morning. You know, I don't have these warm, happy memories. I, I mean, I, no. I'm not resentful. You know, thank you, Toast, no. for being Toast. That's lovely. Uh, yeah. All the Toast lovers out there, <laughs> please don't send emails. Love the Toast myself. Love the yeah. Toast guy. Yeah. Yes, but that was not that was, that's not the memory I'm bringing <clears throat> to the show here. I'm bringing that savoring the oolong and the mm-hmm. smell of it and the rich color of the leaves and sharing it with that little fella. Yeah, you there's know. a nice twisted. It was yep. the twisted style. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So it's that kind of thing that helps you with your depression. Yeah. Too. So you can stack a lot of those moments together that maybe you won't be as, as depressed or down. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. Um, sometimes it's difficult. I mean, I know Candace, you've been struggling. I have been really struggling with a lot of depression and grief over the mm-hmm. last week. Yeah. Or more. <laughs> and and you've you kind of have a setup of stuff that you've been taking herb wise. Yeah, I've got a decoction that I made. Um, One of the things that when you're dealing with depression and grief, at least for me, that I've noticed with other people too, is that you really need to support your internal organs, like your liver and your kidneys, because grief has its own set of residues, its Mm -hmm. wastes, as it were. Right. You know, the stuff that it sloughs off and the chemicals it creates. So you need, you need a lot of support to keep those organs moving, keep your circulation moving well. And then, you know, get rid of, get rid of and and take out all of that stuff. And modern days, we've called them toxins. I don't know if toxin is the right word. I think waste is a nicer way of describing it. I think it's more accurate Mm -hmm. because it isn't really, I mean, it's toxic, but it's waste. Waste. It's waste. If it lingers in your body, it can become becomes toxic. toxic. Yeah. Yeah. So I've got a formula that I've been using, which is a, um, a he show woo and white peony formula. Oh, white peony. Huh. Yeah. Good. White peony is really a wonderful one for moving liver energy, mm-hmm. uh, which means your liver. It also refers to the liver meridian in Chinese medicine, but that is connected with the actual organ. So it helps keep that energy moving. And he show woo does some similar. Can he you show, spell that, please. He, H-E, mm-hmm. show I believe it's S H O. I always want to add a U to that, and I don't know uh-huh. if that that's really belongs there. And then Woo is W U. Okay. Um, I've also seen it sold as Fo T F O space T I. Oh, I think I've seen that. Yeah. 
Yeah. So I've, I've got a formula, it. and the formula that I have with that, I added ashwagandha and shatavari mm, to it. Ashwagandha, my, my favorite. Yeah, and ashwagandha is a good adaptogen in adaptogen style mildly stimulating but not in a not in a you can't sleep tonight kind of way just anti-inflammatory yeah Mm -hmm. and that one is one that's typically traditionally in ayurveda was used for or has been used for men Mm. it's like the oh look you are old enough to you know begin to have wet dreams and think like a man Mm. you take ashwagandha every day for the rest of your life okay and Shatavari is the women's version of that. So Shatavari is helps focuses very much on the builds um, the women's reproductive system. It supports that, but it also supports the endocrine system as a whole. Hmm. And so that one's the one. Oh, you've got your first period. Here's your first cup of Shatavari. Take that for the rest of your life oh. every day. Mm-hmm. You know. And so when we think about them from more of a um, Reproductive systems looked at through the scope of modern medicine, ashwagandha tends to boost and support testosterone and the various versions of testosterone in your body. Mm -hmm. And Shatavari works on the estrogen system. And I believe it works with balancing estrogen and progesterone properly. It Mm -hmm. helps your body to balance those two, which in our current culture is one of the areas where women often go out of balance They become either estrogen dominant, so they have more estrogen than progesterone and the two don't balance with each other, or they have um, like not enough progesterone at all. Like they might have way too much estrogen and normal progesterone, Mm -hmm. or they have normal estrogen, but not enough progesterone. And Shatavari helps to bring that into balance. So it's adapted genetic in that way as well. So is that like uh, one part of each? In your formula? Yeah. Yeah. Right now I use, yeah. And then there are some other herbs that I've added in there, like licorice, which you use use that a lot too. I do. When I, I, I'm a a stress, stress out kind of person, anxiety ridden gal. So I like when I start getting all upset in my stomach, I'll use spearmint and licorice half and half. That's my little thing. Yeah. And that's a really, it's a nice formula. Helps a lot. Yeah. Helps a lot. So you, so go ahead. Sorry. Oh, no, that's all right. Licorice is a terrific one. I added some burdock to that formula as well because it helps with supporting the digestive system and its particular affinity for the intestinal tract. Hmm. So, you know, your reproductive organs are in that area. So yeah, like, sure. well, if, if part of the problem for me, I think might be perhaps some inflammation, you know, let's use burdock and keep things moving as well, you know. Hmm. So it kind of hits the three major waste processing areas you know liver kidney and and intestinal tract wow that's that's cool uh so our i i another thing that i've been throwing out there it's speaking of burdock is mm-hmm. um essiac essiac tea formula i just, haven't used that one so it, it's just uh again when i'm i'm personally stressed out then i get just a lot of inflammation and yeah. you know this is focuses on your so what is SAA? Oh it's a it... it's a formula that has burdock, sheep sorrel, slippery almond, um Turkish rhubarb writ. Um uh, I put dandelion nice. in it, but just something to yeah. work on your digestive system and liver and kidney, like you just said. Yeah. Yeah. But it's it's also it was designed to um help people recover from cancer makes sense so yeah. people add that and and whether it's specific up to helping folks um, recover from cancer or not the other things that it that, that definitely does uh for people that are in those kind of stressful situations it it's 100 percent works fabulous for that so yeah it's got strong digestive herbs in there definitely yeah. so is that a formula you buy it it's brand? all it's a very very old 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 formula yeah, so yeah, yeah. e-s-s-i-a-c is the way it's spelled and it's the person who invented it her name spelled backwards 
<laughs> so, but you'll see different nice. versions of it all yeah. over the place. Yeah. Well, I'm thinking like the slippery elm is one that I've been hearing over the last years is an endangered one, but right. you could easily put marshmallow root instead. Right. Exactly. That would be yep. an excellent substitute for Which that. Which I think actually I do. I'm not yeah. a big slippery so elm So you person. make this from that. Yeah. yeah, and I just have it in a teacher at my at my kitchen window. Um, next nice. to it is uh, turkey tail and dandelion, and then occasionally I'll have like if I if it's cold and flu season, uh, which nice. it is right now, then I have elderberry sitting there. Mm -hmm. Nice, you can grab squirt, squirt, squirt. Exactly. <laughs> Good. Yeah, like, yeah. In the morning, tell mom's in the kitchen because you hear the ding, 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 ding of the yeah. tincture against the glass of the nice. <laughs> nice. me fumbling with the little tincture squirter nice but it does it does wonders um it has really been a, a reliable maybe part of it is the ritual of it too being yeah. consistent with that yeah it's fabulous um i do not like taking supplements yeah. at all like i don't i don't like taking multivitamins i don't like taking i had a hard but i take time. them i, I had take a them hard now. time with that for a long time and I then i i ended up finding the the ones that we take and i because they are all plant-based and whole food based uh -huh. it i got all it was a lot easier and i noticed they actually seem to be doing something right which was really nice. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I don't, I get excited now about sitting down and putting them in because I do the little pill keeper thing. We feel like we're like old people already. Uh -huh. But I'm like, you know, I'd rather be putting supplements that are, you know, good herbs and nutrition. Sure. In. <laughs> so yeah. I don't, just I don't the, mind so even much. Even just that, like I can do the tincture, mm -hmm. but the pills, I'd, and it's not like I have a hard time swallowing pills. I just right. don't like, it makes you feel old and it makes you feel like you're a part of some kind of pharmaceutical system. Or I guess something. I, 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 mean, I had to take a lot of pills when I was growing up. Yeah. yeah. So I think it kind of reminds me of that. I did well, if too. You think, I mean, if you look at like, I know Ken's talking about a lot of people that are, that are older. I mean, they have their pill cabinet. When I when yeah. I buy my you know, yeah when I buy the trays, little when I buy know. the little tray yeah. organizers it's always a senior citizen on the picture always. right you know and I don't feel like <laughs> I'm that old yet yeah you know not that there's anything wrong well with you don't being have any senior. gray hair yet I'm grayer yeah. than you are so yeah, yeah that is true and we are the same age you guys I are win. both grayer than me oh, yeah <laughs> yeah but you got that salt it. and pepper women are paying money for that hair right now. Are they, they are yeah you're actually quite fashionable oh that's about time yeah awesome yeah only took. 50 years mid yeah. mid 50s and and here it goes yeah yeah, <laughs> long. yeah. yeah. I, uh, anyway let's get let's get back to let's get back to sorry, this I, formula thing I, I, yeah i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, there's a a couple of other things i think that um is important which i've been trying to do which when i get out of the car i'll just, i've been trying to just sit there for a minute before rushing to the next thing mm -hmm. Just yeah, like, take a breath. Look around. Where am I? Yeah. Instead of just being part of that pattern. Yeah. Yeah, especially if you're dealing with anxieties and that sort of thing, it's good to slow yourself down mm -hmm. and take those moments to just breathe. Yeah, don't take so long that I can think about yeah. what might yeah. potentially in in imagination land be happening. Yeah. You just have to say, okay, here's here's the parking lot. Engage this in the, the sunshine. Weather. And the, the, yeah. 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 Okay. That's important. All right. Now out we go. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. For me, it's been managing to just keep one foot moving in front of the other. Some days it's very hard mm -hmm. to just keep moving. And I know, I know what happens when you don't keep moving, mm -hmm. partly because I've done that at various points in my life and it's never good. And I've seen other people do that and it's never good. Mm -hmm. It never works. So you have to keep moving. I give myself permission to have times to cry and that sort of thing. It's not like I can't fall down and dissolve into a bucket for a while, mm -hmm. but then I have to get back up and keep going. And that's sometimes that's a challenge. Yep. Yeah. Sometimes I, I I also have been watching stupid movies. Yeah, <laughs> I understand. I've watched a few. Just yeah, dumb. Yeah, I'm gonna go watch. Sorry, folks, if you're going to be offended by this, is my taste not yours? Aquaman. I haven't seen that one yet. 
That's when that you sounds pay for wonderfully good. Uh-huh. You got to pay for that one. It's going to be it. worth it. Because yeah. <laughs> I love the ocean. Yeah. So, so I'm going to see good. it with my girlfriend. Nice. Because I love the ocean. <laughs> so that's, that's awesome. Yep. It's going to be fun. Yes. Because of the ocean. Yep. Yep. There you go. Because <laughs> of the ocean. I love the ocean. Okay. Try not to laugh through the fight scenes I in the back. Oh, God. I could see I could see you sitting in the very back row, chuckling, laughing away, loudly, cackling. Yep, that's <laughs> probably going to happen. There's going to be a lot of comic book nerds potentially there. I know. Try to respect. It's them. just going to be middle aged women. It's going to be like a be. whole row of middle aged women. Yes. Dumb, dumb, dumb. That's what I'm expecting, and it'll mm-hmm. be great. Nice, but yes, I've been listening to audiobooks that are inspiring. Oh, like, great. Like what? I just started listening to Becoming by um, Michelle Obama. Oh, oh. And it's actually surprisingly, well, not surprisingly, I kind of knew it was going to be good, but it's it's really, it's very grounded and it's a healing yeah. book, huh? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there are points where I just, you know, break into tears myself. Right. <laughs> like, sure. oh, why couldn't my life be like that? But you know, mm-hmm. there are, there's a lot of, okay, get, get over myself now. <laughs> Was she really saying I've had a few, you know, I've written down a couple of notes for myself in my journal to like, okay, I want to come back to this thought and think and, and spend some time with that. Mm-hmm. So that's been good. I also listened to a book called leadership. Do you remember who that one was by? Leadership. Patrick suggested it. Yeah. Her last name is Kearns. Doris. Doris. Yeah. Doris Kern. She's a very famous historian. Yeah, it was really good. Yeah, she was a speechwriter or something in uh, Lyndon Johnson's cabinet. Yeah. The White House. And wasn't she the sec- press secretary or um, secretary of something? State? But secretary yeah, she yeah, she yeah she went um, and then taught at Harvard after working with mm-hmm. him, and then would go see him on weekends until he passed. Yeah. Wow. But she's very famous. She's written multiple books. Um, she's done a lot of research with. Um, and I mentioned that book actually yeah. before the turn of the year. Yeah, I well, I again. listened to it. Yeah. I actually did listen to yeah. it. And one of the things that, <clears throat> um, one of the things I've been struggling with is I've had vertigo for like three months. Ugh. And gotta stop that nonsense. Yeah, it's not pleasant. I can't lay down, and so Oof. I'm just began weightlifting in the you know second half of the year last year. And one of the things I love is the bench press. It's my favorite. And I was starting to feel like I was making good progress. And then the vertigo hit and I can't bench press because I can't lay down. And I don't want to be like trying to lift a heavy weight above myself and then have the world start spinning like bed spins. That's no good. That's dangerous. Yeah. So I haven't been able to bench press and it's been very depressing. I mean, there's a lot of things, a lot of yoga poses I can't do right now and and I don't know if the vertigo will ever go away. It may, it may not. Mm-hmm. I know there's no prognosis. You just got to be where you are right now with it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so every time I do the ring rows, which are, oh God, they are hurt. They make my arms burn. Ring rows. Yeah. So it's like doing chin-ups or push pull-ups, mm-hmm. but with rings, like, you know, Olympic people do the oh, rings. It's oh, like the rings. Girl, I know right? what you're talking about. No, and they're, and they're, not they're well, like. She's not splaying out in a T. No, I can't do that. <laughs> you know? But they're, so you are you do them and the rings are about shoulder height. You know, so that's where you're, you're pulling yourself up. You pull, let yourself drop back and you have to keep your body at like a plank. And then you just drop backward and then pull up and you can vary where you put your feet in relation to the rings makes it harder or easier right Mm -hmm. so i do them and then my arms will start to just burn because they're really hard it's hard work on your muscles Mm -hmm. and i've been aggressive with it because i'm angry (laughs) that i can't do bench pressing so i'm like well at least i can do this and every time i do it i think of franklin roosevelt because this is the kind of stuff he did Mm -hmm. after he got polio to rebuild Mm -hmm. his upper body and so, you know, that le- listening to the leadership book, I was like, oh, that's the, she told the story of that. That's what he was doing. And wow. So, you know, it really is inspiring. Yeah. yeah and it's, yeah. uh, uh, her name is Doris Kearns Goodwin. Yeah. Yes. And I, I read her, uh, team arrivals 
the one about Lincoln. Mm. You're, uh -huh. Yeah, now I knew the name was familiar. Man, yeah. you're right. Absolutely fabulous writer. I can understand why that would be inspiring to you. Yeah, yeah. So that's what I've been listening to audiobooks to try to pull myself out at least for a few moments sure. of my own problems. Think about these things that Michelle Obama, honestly, she grew up in a place very different from me, mm -hmm. you know, in that she grew up when she's like a decade or more older than I am, decade older, I think. Is she? I don't think she is. She was in school in the 70s and graduated. She was going off like the year that we graduated from high mm -hmm. school. She was going off to her first job as a lawyer, if I remember correctly. Yeah, probably eight years then. So mm -hmm. she's, you know, she's older than I am. So it was mm -hmm. a different, different time that she grew up in. Yeah. She grew up in the Chicago so Midwestern, but Chicago has a very different vibe from Minneapolis, St. Paul. So yeah, different. 54. But she also grew up in a household where it was traditional. Her mom was a stay at home mom and, and her dad worked, mm -hmm. but they didn't have a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And in, in many ways, there are a lot of aspects of what she dealt with that I can relate to. I mean, many that I can't because, you know, white woman in Minnesota growing up during the time I did, I was very much fit in mm -hmm. and she didn't where she was as much like when she had college but it's similar sure. you know some of her experiences human, are similar human, human relationship kind yeah of stuff. Yep. yeah and and the kind of determination and and willpower and you know self-discipline that she had to create for herself to get where she is today mm -hmm. you know it's something that's inspiring and so you know i'm like trying to remind myself okay you know Sure, you didn't have these things, but you do have those things, and you'll be okay if Michelle Obama can do it. I bet you you can too. Mm -hmm, <laughs> you sure. know, I mean, she's she's not like some kind of miracle person. She's mm -hmm. a normal person, and yeah. she's done a lot. So yeah. well, if she good. can do it, I can. So that's really been helping you out. Yeah, cool. yeah. Well, that's good. Well, it sounds like some. So the the um, diet supplements. Um, some of these formulas we've thrown out, mm -hmm. uh, exercise, um, surrounding yourself with inspiration and surrounding yourself with in inspiring people. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I know I'm, I'm lucky That's to have really good. Yeah. Wonderful folks in my life. And I know that when I'm really hurt, I tend to pull back and just lick my wounds in my little cave as it right. were. And that's not really what I should do. Well, I mean, it's okay to out. take a couple moments, but then mm -hmm. you really got to get yourself out with the people yep. who really inspire you. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Keep keep it moving. So yeah. I hope those are things that really help other folks that are going through similar kind of stuff. You know, it, you, you give yourself permission to not listen to the news a little bit if you don't want to. Yes. Or you can listen to the news and go, man, those people are dumb. I'm 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 doing a lot better than they are. You, <laughs> right. you, you decide how you want to go through that. But uh, yeah. um, send us send us some uh, feedback. Give us some ideas, folks, on things that have been helping you that we haven't mentioned. Yeah. But uh, I would love to hear what kind of like smudge blends people are using. Oh, yeah. You're saying that you were using. The ladies in my animal communication group, there's one of them, and she always reminds us, you know, smudge, clear the energy, clear mm -hmm. it, you know, just clear that, clear that out. And she's right. Mm -hmm. And I mean, the one that I use is cedar that I found. I don't remember where I found it, but wild crafted. Right. We have so, cedar yeah. all over the place. Yeah, it's all over the folks. place here. Mm -hmm. I think it was on a walk with you, actually. It oh. was the cedar I got that oh, time right, together. Right, right, yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. And then garden sage from my garden. Yeah. And I mean, I've I've used white sage at times in the past, mm -hmm. but I have to honestly say that I don't personally find it any better for clearing energy than the sage that grows in my own yard. Mm. So I just use that. Right. You know, I mean, I suppose if you live in an area where white sage is a natural part mm -hmm. of the environment, it might be the right one to use. Yeah, but... It isn't uh, on the endangered yeah. list. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's its own little thing, too, is white sage and sage well great yeah. but let us know folks uh, until then put, put an, an herb, herb on, on it statements made about herbs and products on this podcast have not been evaluated by the United States Food and Drug Administration FDA and are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure or prevent disease all information provided on this podcast 
or any affiliated websites is for informational purposes only and is not intended as a substitute for advice from your physician or other healthcare professional. You should not use the information on this podcast and its affiliated websites for a diagnosis or treatment of any health problem. Always consult with healthcare professional before starting any new vitamins, supplements, diet, or exercise program before taking any medication, or if you have or suspect you might have a health problem. Any testimonials, questions, or case studies are based on individual results and do not constitute a guarantee that you will achieve the same results.